Have you guys thought about how wild DMs are? You know, direct messaging? He knows. That guy knows all about that shit. Yeah, it's the horny millennials' preferred way of communicating with one another. And I'll give him credit, it is an art form. And it just so happens that every guy my age thinks that they're like the fucking Picasso of direct messaging. Mmm, mmm, it's me. Because you see, I'll see a girl's story on her Instagram and it'll be like her public gym mirror, a pair of yoga pants that are like two sizes too small. I'll see that shit. Game on! <laughs> Hit him with that eggplant emoji! <laughs> and you know if I go straight to the eggplant emoji, all subtlety is out the window. I mean, at that point, the chips are just on the table. And look, I know the chances of me finding a wife through solely eggplant emoji are low, but they're never zero. <laughs> all right, you guys, they're giving me the light. Thank you all so much. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> the night is a true staple of mediocre comedy. Give it up for Mr. Sean Keating. Thank you. I'd ask how everyone's doing tonight, but I don't give a shit. And when I do ask, there's never a direct answer. Nobody ever shouts back, hey, Sean, I'm doing great. It's always, woo, and they clap. Like, why is that the go-to response? Imagine that anywhere else. You're catching up with someone at a gender reveal party. Hey, man, long time no see. How you been? Woo. Like, what the fuck would you even say to that? Also, I know for a fact that all of you aren't doing well, so what's with all the noise? I'd say that most of you aren't doing well, and that's why you're here. Three marriages in here are on the brink of collapse. And this asshole still wooing me after a year and a half of couples therapy. Hey, I'm a recent divorcee. Oh, fuck you. I've never been happier in my life. Divorce is fucking brutal. My God. There's nothing more liberating than walking out of that courtroom for the last time. I've never felt so free. It was that moment that I knew exactly what the Haitian Revolution felt like for all those, well, Haitians. Now imagine that you can smell the fragrance of the foliage and trees and you can feel the fine mist of water that rises off a babbling brook. And now, overlooking the vast forest of life, you can hear the rustle of wind in the trees. As you take a deep breath in, and slowly let it out. What the fuck is that? Sean, please. You hear that too, right? There is a very hostile energy here. Uh, this is a safe space, Sean. Is there something the two of you would like to say? I think I'm gonna need a drink to get through this. Why can't you ever be agreeable? Who the fuck says agreeable? I don't know what else to do. He doesn't even take the time to listen anymore. I feel like I'm always alone. Sean, Marcia tells me that you have a, a, a drinking habit. Now you're telling Gandhi I'm an alcoholic? I drink casually, at work. What do you do? I'm a comic. This was a mistake. Uh, I'm sorry for wasting your time, Clark. Maybe the two of you should consider couples therapy. Mm. Maybe you should consider getting a hair transplant, Clark. My dad was a heavy drinker. I mean, literally heavy drinker. 
Uh, he's the closest thing to a bear. Hey, suck a dick. <laughs> but uh, serious though, he'd, uh, he'd grab a bottle of whiskey and wouldn't be seen all winter. If drinking were an Olympic sport, my dad would be the most decorated athlete in American history. <laughs> he'd be the Michael Phelps of the whiskey sour shot put. <laughs> Why do you let him do this to you? Sometimes he just gets a little angry. Yeah, the motherfucker could drink all right. I felt bad for his liver, poor thing. Once I drew a comic where I had it jump out of his body and grab a steak knife and then just stab the fucker. <laughs> that one didn't make the fridge, that's for sure. <laughs> Sean, go back to bed, honey. You guys got that one sleazy ass cousin? Only comes around when you need something? Yeah. Well, I'm God's sleazy ass cousin. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'm kind of religious, but I only really pray when it's something big. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if God's just stopped listening. He's probably up there thinking, what a piece of shit this guy is. A real garbage bin, huh? Jesus, Sean. What the fuck? Shh. What the hell are you doing? Relax. I just missed the couch. Don't tell me to relax. Keep your voice down. You're gonna wake him up. Fuck off. I want him to see you like this. You deserve it. Oh, you love that. The whole fucking family's here. Come on, little buddy. Come see what a colossal bitch your mommy is. Ah. You used to be so afraid to turn out like him. But I hope you know that you're no better than he ever was. Fuck you, Marsha. <laughs> you had to be there. As you can see, I'm in my early 40s, I'm recently divorced, and at this point I'm just being realistic with myself. It's hard for me to date now. Well, it's hard for me to date anybody that's not ugly. <laughs> I'm surprised some of you didn't like that one. But who am I to talk? I haven't had sex in six months. Well, sex I didn't have to pay for. And the no sex thing is getting to me, I think. Last week I had my first prostate exam. The doctor was great. Real pro. Thorough. Gentle. I felt really cared for. I uh, don't usually do second dates, but I've got another one scheduled for Tuesday. <laughs> And I'm no stranger to paying for sex, but he's the first hooker I've ever had that accepted my insurance card. <laughs> Got a lot of sour faces right now. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't care. Up the dosage for the Lexapro. That should help. Hello, this is Marsha Keating. Leave me a message and I'll give you a call back. Excuse me, sir. Hi, sorry to interrupt, but you're Sean Keating, right? Uh. <laughs> Holy shit. It's you, I, 
I mean, I'm, I'm not bothering you, am I? Uh, no, no, I was just... Dude, I've been watching your shit forever. I put all my friends on it. You're a legend. Like, like no joke, just keep doing you. Thanks. Means a lot. I, um, I was gonna ask for a picture, but... I'm going to the, down to the ale house. It's like literally a minute from here. Um, can I buy you a beer or something? I have a couple of my buddies there waiting for me. Um, they're, they're big fans of yours too. Yeah, why not? I could use this drink. <laughs> my pops kicked me out of the house a few days after my 17th birthday. I was terrified. Three days later, I got my first job busting tables in this room. Goes to show the standard of excellence here. <laughs> when I was a table bitch, <laughs> I saw a lot of great comedians come up and down this stage. I thought to myself, well, shit, I could do that. I learned a lot by watching, seeing with my own eyes. It took me five years to work up the stones to get on the stage for myself. When I finally did, for some reason, I invited my dad. When he was sitting right there, at the back bar, the worn out North Face, the Cubs hat, probably on his fourth double J Mo, stumbling through telling some 20 something year old how sad it makes him that his wife's dead. So after my set, I go up to the fucker. I ordered the same drink as him. When the bartender sat down, I asked him what he thought. He put his hand on my shoulder. He looked me right in between the eyes. He said, that beard makes you look like a fucking rabbi. My father, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, man. Great set. <laughs>